away our sins, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, Lord God. Lord God, we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would take reign, our God, in this service, Lord Jesus. We pray even now, Jesus, oh God, that you would have your way, God. Have your way, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray, Lord God, that you would do something spectacular on today, God. Perform miracles, signs, and wonders, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we pray even now, Jesus. Oh God, against the hand of the enemy, God. Against the hand of the enemy, God. That's trying to kill, steal, and to destroy us, God. Lord God, we decree and declare that we so walk in our God-given destiny. We have a solid foundation, God. Lord Jesus, we are walking in our destiny, Lord God. We are walking in our destiny, Lord Jesus. So Lord God, we pray even now, Jesus, that you would do the miraculous on today, God. Lord Jesus, do supernatural, God, on today, God. Lord Jesus, we can agree and declare, God, that my prophecies, oh God, are coming forth, Lord Jesus. Every good word that has been spoken over our lives, God, shall come to pass, God. It shall come to pass, God. Oh Lord Jesus, we pray, Lord Jesus, even now, God, that there will be no delays or distractions on our assignment, Lord God. We pray, oh God, even now, God, against delay, God, any delays, Lord Jesus, any delays, God, we decree and declare, God, no delays, God, no delays, Lord Jesus, no delays, Lord Jesus, let it come forth, God, let it spring forth, Lord God, right now like a well, Lord God, let it spring forth, God, right now in the name of Jesus, Lord God, hallelujah, God, no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper. No weapon that is formed against us shall prosper, Lord God. Hallelujah. No demonic arrow will be fired against us. That shall prevail, God. Though the enemy comes to, the, to, to attack us, Hallelujah. Try to kill us, God. Look how you are putting a hedge of protection around us, God. Put a hedge of protection around us, God. Put a hedge of protection around us, Lord Jesus. Lord God, we decree and declare, God, that we have life, God. That we have life and we have it abundantly. Hallelujah. We exude the love and joy of Christ. Our life shall produce great fruit for the kingdom of God. We are fruitful and productive. Say, repeat after me and say, I decree and declare that I am fruitful and productive. Let us pray on that. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord God, we are fruitful and productive, Lord Jesus. Anything in you, God, must come to life, God. Anything in you, oh Lord Jesus, as the evangelist said on Wednesday, God, shall multiply, God. So Lord God, we decree and declare, God, multiplication, God, in this house, God. Fill your house, God, with believers, God. Fill this house, God, with your servants, God. Fill this household, God, with those that will seek after your face, God, that will turn from their unrighteousness, oh God, that they will seek your face, God, that they will turn from unholy living, God, and become, oh God, those servants, God, that shall live holy lives, God, that will live righteous lives, oh God, hallelujah, God, for we have the mind of Christ, God, we have the mind of Christ, God, so we decree and declare, God, even now, God, that we are the righteousness of Christ. We are the righteousness of Christ, God. Hallelujah, God. We thank you, God, for your holy way. We thank you, God, for your righteous way. We thank you, God, for what you are doing in this season, God. We thank you, oh Lord, God, for everything you have done for us, God. We thank you, Jesus, for what you are doing in this season, God. We thank you, Jesus, for what you shall do, God. For God, we know even in the future, God, of our human existence, God, that you have already done it, God, because you are a God that lives in all eternity, God. There is no future in you, God, because you are already there, God. We're just trying to get there, God. So, Lord Jesus, let, oh, God, every prayer, God, every blessing, God, be manifested in our lives, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. God, we pray, God, even now, God, that you would bless us, God, and show us great favor, Lord God. Show us great favor, God. Show us, oh, God, your anointing, God. Pour down your 
glory in our life, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, and your glory, God. Hallelujah, God. Lord Jesus, we shall walk in prosperity. I decree and declare you are going to walk in prosperity. Just lift up your hands and say, I decree and declare that I am rich in the word. Let us pray. We decree and declare that we are rich in your word, God. Lord Jesus, you have not called us to be poor. You have not called us, oh God, to be in need of money, to be in need of prosperity, God. But Lord Jesus, you have made us to be rich, God. We don't have to wait until we die to go into heaven and be rich, God, to be prosperous, God. But you have called and appointed your people, God, to be prosperous, prosperous, oh God, in our lives, God, to be prosperous, oh God, so that we might feed the homeless, God. Give, that we might be prosperous, oh God, to feed those, God, and oh God, with the word of God, to feed those, oh God, even physically, God, and emotionally, God, to be supportive, God, to all those that you have called us to, God, what it is here in Patterson, God, what it is in Ghana, God, what it is in Liberia, God, what it is in Uganda, Lord Jesus, what it is in Pakistan, God, what it is in India, God, or whatever other country you bring in the kingdom, my international fellowship, God. We decree and declare, God, that your glory, God, and prosperity, God, will touch, oh God, every place, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. I decree and declare that we are not defeated. I decree and declare that we are not defeated. Hallelujah. But I am more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus. We are empowered from on high. We gain insights from the Lord. We break agreement with poverty, victim, and defeat mental health issues in Jesus' name. My identity is not in that negativity or as a popular, but we have a royal inheritance, oh God. So Lord God, we're gonna take you, God, in advance, Lord Jesus. For oh God, for we, oh God, a royal God. We are your royal priesthood, God. Lord Jesus, make us like you, God. Make us like you, Jesus. Make us like you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. No, God, we pray even now, God, anything not like you, Jesus, that you would take it out of us, God. Remove it in the name of Jesus, Lord, God. We decree and declare, God, even now, Jesus, that we find your ascent, that we find our unrighteousness, oh, God. Oh, God, that it shall be removed in the name of Jesus, God. Wash us in your precious blood. Wash us in your precious blood, Jesus. Right now, Jesus, we pray, oh God, that you would have your way in our lives, God. Make us all living your pistols, God. Oh God, to testify to others, God, of what you have done for us, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We pray even now, God, and we decree and declare that. That we are the anointing of God is going to make people come one again to help catapult this ministry to the next level, God. Send in willing workers and dedicated members to this vineyard of the gospel. Oh Lord Jesus, empower us to evangelize effectively to those who are lost in the streets. And when they come into the house of God, let our lives be living in pistol of what God has done and what we can do in the lives of others. We declare increase in our ministry and that God will enlarge the tents of our ministry. We declare the five-point community vision of this Franklin, of this Patterson community will lift off quickly, God, that every need shall be met, oh God, and that there shall not be a shortage of volunteers, Lord God. We decree uncommon favor, oh God, in uncommon places, with uncommon people, God. Hallelujah. We decree that God's favor has located Kingdom Life Temple Deliverers, for this is the year of increase, enlarge and take over, God. We're going to take the city by force. We're going to take the city by force, God. 
We decree and declare to any sickness, disease, or ailment that you are healed. You have what you say. We decree that this is our birthing season. Hallelujah. May every dormant spiritual gift and spiritual office leap forth in the name of Jesus. Today, we are going to have a great service, God. So, Lord Jesus, we all got to lift this service, God, into your hands, God. Your hands that knows all things, God. And, Lord Jesus, we pray even now, God. Oh, God, that you would save someone in this community. Deliver somebody in this community, God. Fill somebody with the Holy Ghost, God. And, Lord Jesus, even those, God, that were filled with the Holy Ghost, God, we pray, God, that you would refill us, God, on today. Refill us, oh, God. On today is our prayer, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, God. And it is so. And it is so. And it is so. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. amen. And at this time, we'll be in the hands of our Lady Santa Cannon. Amen. To God be the glory. This is the day the Lord has made. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. It's time for our praise and worship. Amen. Amen. Let's all join in and magnify the God. His name is Emmanuel. He shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You deserve the glory and the honor. Amen. You deserve the glory. 
by sending a text message to 833-338-9693 to receive KLT updates and events. 
Our Kingdom Connect Wednesday takes place this Wednesday with prayer at 7.30 p.m. followed by our Bible study at 8 p.m. On this Wednesday, we will be having evangelism highlights with Evangelist Grace. Please come on out for this interactive session. Please note that our Kingdom Connect Wednesday prayer and Bible study will be held on our conference phone line. Phone number is 605-313-5765. Again, that is 605-313-5765. And the code is 196-2978. Again, 196-2978. Next week's Sunday Empowerment begins with our Christian education at 2.30pm and our worship service at 3.15pm with our speaker, Pastor J. Samuel Canyon. The theme, There's a Blessing in Giving and Honor. The More Grace Awakening takes place Sunday, November 3rd, the 10th and the 17th at 3pm. The speakers are Evangelist Grace Ouzo and Paul Pastor J. Samuel Kenyon and Archbishop Keith R. Wright Sr. Also on November 17th, the Episcopal proclamation of Pastor J. Samuel Kenyon to the office of Bishop-elect in the Lord's Church will be announced. Volunteers, volunteers, volunteers needed. The church is seeking volunteers to be a part of the greatest team, praise and worship team, Christian education teachers, hospitality team, sight and sound team, executive staff to the senior pastor and the Kingdom Life International Fellowship, security and adjutancy court, community development team. If interested, please complete the form to become a member at the website www.kltofdeliverance.com. Please follow Kingdom Life Temple of Deliverance on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok, or on our website at www.kltofdeliverance.com. Changing lives for the better through Jesus Christ. uh, Today we will be on part two of the reciprocity of honor that we started on last week. Amen.
sing from you. Hallelujah. Let's just say that together. A blessing from you. My hands are lifted up. My hands are lifted up. My heart is ready to receive. My heart is ready to receive a blessing from you. A blessing from you. A blessing from you. My hands are lifted up. Lord, we praise you on today, God. Lord, we praise you on today, Lord Jesus. And we shout hallelujah, which is the highest praise, God. Hallelujah, God, which is the highest praise, God. Lord God, we pray, Lord Jesus, even now, God, as I stand before your people on today, Lord Jesus, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength, and my redeemer, all the people of God, say amen. 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 Our scripture for today is coming from the book of Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 9. We thank God for each and every one of you all. Thank God for our first lady on today, on the, led on the praise and worship and everything that she is doing for the Kingdom Life Temple Deliverance. Can we give our Lady Canyon a hand clap, amen, hallelujah. We thank God for her on today. Proverbs chapter three, verse nine, just that verse says, honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. And can we read that all together? Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. Blessed is the reading of the word of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Again, this is part two of the reciprocity of honor. The reciprocity of honor. We know that on the very first things that we were focusing on, on the reciprocity of honor was coming from three different points. Uh, the first point being from a parenting perspective, the second being a pastor to congregation perspective, and number three was how we honor God, how we honor God, how we honor God. So looking at this portion of the scripture, Proverbs 3 and 9, even in the NIV version, it says, honor the Lord with your wealth. With the first fruits of all your crops. So this is focusing on the honor in our relationship with God. The honor in our relationship with God. 
So again, as we have mentioned um, last week, the Hebrew word for honor is kavod, which is K-A-V-O-D, which gives us a profound insight into what it means to honor the Lord. Kavod is often translated as glory or honor. But its root meaning carries the idea of weight or heaviness. To honor someone in a biblical sense is to recognize their weight, their importance, or their glory. So when we say we honor God, we are saying that we acknowledge the weight of his majesty, his authority, and his presence in our lives. Amen. But Proverbs 3, 9 tells us to honor God with our wealth, giving him the first and best of what we have. So God does not want our leftovers, but God is more worried and concerned that we are giving of the first. Um, whether that is big or little in our own eyes, God knows what we are giving out of our first. So this principle extends even beyond finances. It speaks to how we prioritize God in every area of our lives. Our time, our talents, and our obedience. So the work of God implies that God's glory and honor should be the heaviest, most important aspect of our lives. And even if we think of this word kavod, um, we, we have, let's just ask, See, the kavod is standing for the weight of God's glory. So, let's come here, my wife. So, let's just say right here, right, we're praising God. But when, when God, come in and sit on my leg a little bit. <laughs> see? Oh, then the weight is coming, see? So, then we have to adjust. Thank you. That's what we have to do. With when we are thinking about how we provide or give God the glory, we adjust to his weight. Hallelujah, because his weight is more than us. We are adjusting to God, what he wants to do in our lives. God does not adjust to what we are doing, but we make the adjustment. Someone say, you got to make the adjustment. You got to make the adjustment. So we honor God by living lives that reflect his character, by obeying his commands, and by worshiping him in spirit and truth. So when we give God our first fruits, whether it's our time, our resources, or our devotion, we are demonstrating his priority in our lives. This is simply a way of saying, God, you carry the most weight in my life. God, you carry the most weight in my life. What, so what is God's response to our honor? God's response to our honor is found in 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 30. It says, those who honor me, I will honor, but those who despise me will be disdained. So God honors those who honor him by blessing them with his presence, Hallelujah. his favor, and his provision. When we put God first, when we put God first, he reciprocates by opening doors, making a way, and pouring out blessings that we cannot contain. So when we trust God with our finances and give sacrificially, he blesses us in return. Similarly, when we obey his call on our lives, even when it's difficult, God honors our faithfulness with greater opportunities and deeper spiritual rewards. So let's focus on how we show honor to pastors, how we show honor to pastors. Just as we honor God for who he is, we honor pastors for the role God has given them. We honor pastors for the role God has given them. 
For pastors are given a heavy responsibility to shepherd, teach, and care for their flock. Hebrews 13, verse 17. Hebrews 13, verse 17 says, Have confidence in your leaders and submit to their authority because they keep watch over you as those who must give an account. So honoring pastors involves recognizing the weight or the, the kavod of their spiritual oversight and respecting the position God has entrusted them with. We, we grow and we are supposed to be growing under spiritual leadership, yes. spiritual authority. So that is the only way we will continue to grow into God is you got to be under the right spiritual authority. Yes. Hallelujah. And there is a reciprocity of honor. How do we honor pastors? How do we honor pastors? By praying for them. You must keep your pastors, your leaders in prayer. Even as the senior pastor here, we're praying for all of the members, those future members, sometimes late in the middle of the night, sometimes at 2 a.m., 3 a.m., or sometimes God might just put that person in my mind in the middle of the night. Even though I've already prayed, but then it is my duty, my responsibility to pray at that time when God says to pray for that person. Because we don't know what they might be going through. So we must be obedient. Mm -hmm. So we also, and, and re reciprocity, must also pray for our leaders. Pray for your pastors. Pray for me. Amen? Amen. Amen. We honor pastors by encouraging them in their ministry. Encouraging them in their ministry. So it's a good thing just to learn to encourage one another just as we encourage you. Also the pastor sometimes needs a word of encouragement that things will work out. Things will be well. So we have to encourage pastors in their ministry. And how do we encourage them in ministry? By You might have a, a word of um, encouragement, a word of support, and just your devotion, your support that you give to the house of worship is encouraging them in the ministry. Another way of honoring pastors is by supporting them financially and with service. Supporting them financially and with service. So again, as we raise cheerful giving, our offerings, our tithes, it goes first to the house of the Lord. Because as we know, of course, there are expenses in every house of worship. And as we already know, the lease here, the various different things we're trying to do in order to increase the kingdom of God here and even to reach out into this community requires financial support. And then we also need the service, as I said. Are you making yourself available? Make yourself available so then, then we can be able to go out. Let's say as we have evangelists and outreach or some another type of outreach event that we're having outside, it requires our service and devotion. Amen? Amen. 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 Also, another way to honor pastors respecting their leadership and following their guidance. Respecting their leadership and following their guidance. How do we respect leadership and follow their guidance is not just by just following what they say or what the vision of the house is, but we making sure that we are walking in the same vision, the same mission that the pastor has set for the house of God. And then we have to respect the leadership and then also just as a, as a sidebar, right? Now, if a pastor was trying to tell you to do something wrong, then we know we shouldn't be following that type of leadership. If they're trying to tell you to do something wrong that is sinful, right? then that would not be God's spiritual leadership. So we just don't follow leadership blindly. 
But we are, but there's some people that say, Pastor, I, whatever you say, whatever I do, I'll just go. But, at, but what we need to be saying is, Father, Pastor, as you follow God, I'll follow you. If the pastor is following God, then we need to follow that pastor because some pastors are not really following God. Uh, some pastors have been in, uh, in a position of authority too long where they're trying to more so lead of their own selves, their own strength. But what is God telling the pastor to say unto the house of the Lord? So a church that prays for his pastor regularly and encourages them is helping lift the burden of leadership. Helps lift the burden of leadership, allowing the pastor to serve more effectively and joyfully. But as I conclude, the circle of honor. The circle of honor. Honor is a circle. Everyone knows how a circle is? It goes like this, right? A circle. This, the circle, a circle, circle. So an honor is a circle. It flows from one person to another. Again, it flows from one person to another, from one relationship to another, and ultimately from God to us, and then back to God. Hallelujah. I'm say that one more time. Honor is a circle. It flows from one person to another, from one relationship to another, and ultimately from God to us and back to God. Amen. So it continues. That's why there's a reciprocity of honor. It has to come back. And even as you talked about back in the beginning from last week, even when it talks about parent children and children relationship, there's a reciprocity of honor from both sides. There is a reciprocity of honor when it comes to pastors and congregation. There's a reciprocity of honor when it comes to God and us. So when we live in a posture of honor, whether as parents, pastors, congregants, or followers of Christ, we are participating in a divine exchange that brings blessing, peace, and God's favor. Yeah. Hallelujah. So just ask yourself this on today. Are you honoring your parents or children in a way that reflects God's heart? One more time, that question is, are you honoring your parents or children in a way that reflects God's heart? For honor we must reflect the very essence of God's heart. And in God's heart is love. And God's heart is honor. For there is an honor in a circle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Honor is a circle. Are you honoring your pastor and spiritual leaders? Hallelujah. Again, there is a circle of honor. Hallelujah. What goes around comes around is the saying, right? So we have to be very careful. Most importantly, are you honoring God in your daily life by giving him the right, by giving him the glory, by giving him the kavod? Are you giving God the glory in your life? Are you honoring God with your servant? Are you honoring God with your devotion? Are you honoring God with the way that you praise God when you come into the sanctuary? Are you honoring God when you come into the house of the Lord? When you learn to worship Him in spirit and in truth? No one has to tell you to lift your hands up. No one has to tell you to say thank you. No one has to tell you shout hallelujah. But when you think of the all the goodness of the Lord and what he's done for you. Your very soul ought to cry out hallelujah. Thank God for saving a wretch like me. It was because of God's amazing grace that he allowed us to be saved. Hallelujah. It was God's amazing grace that saved a wretch like you and I. It was God's amazing grace that allowed us to honor one another, to 
honor him as we command our God because of everything he has done for us. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Jesus. For honor is a circle. What is? What are you taking in? What are you taking out? What are you taking in? What are you taking out? Hallelujah, for it must flow. Someone say, let it flow. Let honor flow in your life. Are you living according to the word of the Lord? Are you living in God's presence? Are you living in the way that God has said in his word? For the Bible says, let everything be done decently and in honor. Hey, hallelujah, Jesus. Just tell somebody, are you living decently? and in honor. Hallelujah. Are you living decently and in honor for God that a God that we serve will reveal everything in the dark. Everything in the dark shall come to light. So that's why we got to be in the position where God has pulled us to be. In the position of where we need to be spiritually. We need the more of God. We need his presence. We his glory. We need his command. Someone just say Lord sit on me God. Lord let your glory sit on me. Let your presence sit on me God. Let your presence God sit on me God. Oh yes Lord Jesus. Even now God. Hallelujah. We dedicate our lives oh God to you oh God. Wash us in your precious blood, oh God. Make us white as snow, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Wash us again, Jesus. Wash us, oh God, in your precious blood. Hallelujah, Jesus. It doesn't make sense scientifically that we can be made white, that we can be made pure when we are washing the blood of the Lamb because that's red. And how do you get white? It's only because of the power of God, because the God that we serve is supernatural, performs a miracle, signs and wonders. So that is the only way. Hallelujah, God. Give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, God, that's why we must learn to honor. Honor is a circle. As I said, what goes around comes around. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So let us serve God faithfully. Hallelujah. Let us serve God faithfully. Why do we serve God faithfully? Why do we serve God faithfully? Because great is his faithfulness. Hallelujah. Great is his faithfulness. Hallelujah. He did not have to do it, but he did. Hallelujah. He blessed you anyway, despite your sin. He blessed you anyway, despite your past. He blessed you anyway, despite what you're going through right now. He blessed you still when you shouldn't have been blessed. Hallelujah. He kept your mind. Well, hallelujah. When you wanted to turn behind, when you wanted to go the other way, God yet kept you, brought him back to you. Hallelujah. He brought us back to him. Hallelujah, God. That's the honor. Yes. That's the how we honor God. That's how we honor God. Be faithful to him. He will be faithful to you. Hallelujah. God's greatest act of faithfulness to us by was by sending his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Am I talking to anyone in here today that no, if it wasn't for the Lord that was on your side, where would you be? Hallelujah. We could have been dead and gone and sleeping of a grave, but for the grace and mercy of God, we are yet here in the land of the living. So that's why we praise God. That's why we lift the name of Jesus. It's only in the name of Jesus that we have freedom. It's only in the name of Jesus that we have our liberty. It's only in the name of Jesus that we can be the living. It's only in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, God, that we can, we can be saved. Hallelujah. It's all in the name of Jesus. Someone say it's all in 
the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a blessing in giving and honor. There is a blessing in giving and honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There is a blessing in giving and honor. So let us remember throughout the week in our lives, hallelujah, that there is a reciprocity of honor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What has God been sharing into your life? When you're praying, what is God answering back? It's an interesting thing where people say they keep praying to God, but yet they never receive an answer because they're not listening to the still small voice of our God. Because they want to sometimes hear a different answer, they don't hear what God is saying to them. Hallelujah. So let us have a reciprocity of honor in our lives. Hallelujah. For what God is doing in this day and age, in these last and evil days, we need to get ready and stay ready and be ready when he comes back. Whether that be by the grave, we want to die, because we're not even promised to leave right out of here. We're not promised even to walk across the street, to get back home, to get back here on our next Wednesday or Sunday, right? That's why we have to be making sure that we make our election sure. Hallelujah. Who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our daddy is Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you have been watching the blood of the lamb, your father is Jesus. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. But let me just say Jesus because there's power in the name of Jesus. It was Jesus that laid down his life for you and I. They did not take the life from out of Jesus at Calvary, but Jesus had to lay down his life. They thought they took his life. But Jesus laid down his life in order to fulfill prophecy, in order for us to be saved today. Because when he died in that instance going down the Hades, because all of the sin, past, present, and in the future, was nailed to him on the cross. He died for all sin once and for all because he was the perfect lamb. He was the lamb of God. So that's why we do not have to, and thank God as a priest, we don't have to be receiving any type of lambs here, any type of animal sacrifice here. But we thank God that we are yet here because it is because Jesus died for us once and for all. Even when we mess up, God is still there. Because God's not mad at you, but he's madly in love with you. Great is his mercy. Great is the mercy of the Lord. Great is his faithfulness. Great is the blessings of the Lord. Hallelujah. The reciprocity of honor. Hallelujah. Ask that we understand at this time the reciprocity of honor. If there's anyone of the brothers to break in your fire at this time. Hallelujah. Of the sin taken we 